Shalom, brethren. Shalom. Baruch are all who revere Yahuwah and walk in his way. So I'm going to um, continue with my experience um, during the Passover of 2021. And I'm going to read the same scriptures that was read um, in the other audio regarding that Passover experience. Beginning with Exodus 12, one, um, verse 1. And Elohim spoke unto Moses and Aharon in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year. So there is no second first year. How does that make sense? A second first of the year, head of the year. No. He already said when it is, and this is when it is. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak unto all the congregation of Yeshurel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. And if the house be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man, according to his eating, shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without a blemish, without blemish, a male of the first year, you shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. Isn't he very specific? And the whole assembly of the congregation Yeshurel shall kill it in the evening. He just he's just showing order. And everything he does, there's order. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. And they shall, they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread with bitter herbs. They shall eat it. He didn't add anything else on that plate, did he? Eat not of it raw nor sodden at all with water, but with roast, but roasted with fire, his head with his legs and with the entrails and guts thereof. And you shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remains of it until the morning you shall burn with fire, and you shall eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is Elohim's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment. I am Elohim. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood... I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. This day shall be for you a memorial, and you shall keep it a feast to Elohim throughout your generations. <laughs> you shall keep it a feast for an ordinance forever. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, even the first day you shall put away leaven out of your houses, for whosoever eats leavened bread for the first, from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Yisrael. And in the first day there shall be a, a set-apart convocation, and in that seventh day there shall be a set-apart convocation to you. No man or work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat, that only may be done of you. And you shall observe the feast of unleavened bread. For this, in this selfsame day, have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore, you shall observe the day in this in your generations for an ordinance forever. So what I saw, oh, let me finish reading this last one. In the first month on the 14th day of the month at Eden, you shall eat unleavened bread until the 21st day of the month at Eden. Seven days shall be no leaven found in your houses, for whatsoever, whosoever eats that which is leaven, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. You shall eat nothing leaven in all your habitations. Shall you eat in all your hab... Ha okay, let me, I apologize. So verse 20, you shall eat nothing leaven. Semicolon. So pause and go on. In all your habitations... Shall you eat unleavened bread? Okay. So did you notice that during this feast, he is concentrating more on eating that unleavened bread? He's concentrating more on getting the leaven 
out of the house. That's one of the things that I saw that year when I was studying and just so determined to get a better understanding for myself. Um, so you'll have to listen back to the other audio to hear what all I shared there. So think of the word pass over, pass over, pass over. So you're not stopping, you're not lingering. You're going from one point. It's almost like you jump over a, a portion of a place. So you, you're here and you jump over, you pass over to get to that other part, right? Pass over. So this is a Passover fe um, feast. And he explains why the Passover. What did he say? Verse 13, 12, for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am Elohim. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial and you shall keep it a feast to Elohim throughout your generation. You shall keep it a feast for an ordinance forever. Could it be that we can, during that time, um, a Passover, because like I said, I don't, I don't deal with a lamb anymore, but what I do is commemorate what Yahuwah did, his strong hand, how he delivered um, the children of Jacob, the children of Yeshurel. And so we, we can do that um, as well as what I did was um, I thanked him for the blood that has protected me from one Passover to the next, which means from one year to the next. I was under the blood. I was protected. My loved ones were protected. And so he passed, he caused the death angel. He caused the one that is evil and brings evil to pass over me and my descendants. He protected us from destruction. So, I did that um, in place of buying polluted lamb to, you know, re, re, um, play what happened on that first Passover. Um, because if you're going to do everything that it says, we ought also to be, um, have our loins girded, our shoes on our feet, and our staff in our hand, and eat it in haste. But that is not what religion does, does it? They set an elaborate table, and they make it this. That's not how the first one was, not at all. But even going to that, the first day of unleavened bread is the same day that the lamb was slain for blood to be applied to the doorposts and um for the people to be protected. So why are people doing that part of it? We cannot add to anything that Yahuwah lays down. Um, a sister sent me a video um, yesterday on Shabbat. Um, and a man was talking about uh, some of the things he said. I wasn't sure where he was coming from. But the thing that I did pick out of that was the order. Yahuwah has already set order in place and there is to be no other order. And we know there's talk about there being this um, order that man is wanting to put implement. Um, Yah has already put things in order from the very beginning when he said, let there be. And he created creation. He gave man time, you know, so um, a little portion out of eternity and he allowed um, there to be time. And he said that in, in Genesis. Um, so order has already been set and he has given us this for us to continue on with knowing that when we have the blood of Yahusha, his Yah's lamb applied to our lives, to our homes, that 
the evil one will pass over. He will have to pass over. If he's going down the streets and bringing calamity, when the blood is there, Yahuwah will give an order to him. Don't you stop there. Those are mine. Don't you touch them. The blood has been applied to the doorpost and um, the lentil, and you will not, you will not touch them. And so verse 13 says, and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, meaning I will give order for it to pass over you and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. And once again, one audio I mentioned, you know, you ever thought about that? When, when I first was taught the word plague, I always thought it was um, pestilence. It was um, diseases. But when you look at the account of um, the 10 plagues uh, uh, in um, Misraim, they weren't all sicknesses. There was frogs and, and um, locusts and blood in the water and those kind of things. So plagues to me are just calamities um, that bring destruction. Okay. So, so what I did was I commemorate when I, and my commemoration, I thanked Yah for sending Yahusha to be that perfect lamb to sacrifice his life. Um, so that that blood could be, be applied to me and my descendants on our house and that it was our covering and it protected us from the death angel, from the evil one. And so that sacrifice that they did that night is different from the sacrifices that Yahuwah instructed Mose to tell the high priest to do once a year, which would be down in the, you know, I think they came around that now in the fall. You know, I'm still a student. I am not a scholar, but those sacrifices that they did for the sin offering and the peace offering um, is not the same as this Passover lamb sacrifice. Okay. So when we apply the blood of Yah's lamb, we are protected. Now, one group of people that I used to worship with, they were so almost flippant. I'm going to say with using the blood of the lamb, the blood of the lamb, you know, um, and I understand where that derived from, but it just came to see it was almost like, um, I'm going to do wrong and then I'm going to run real quick and hide behind the blood of the lamb. That's not what it's for. Um, so when we have the blood of the lamb on us, we are protected. We are covered just like the first Passover where the death angel went through Goshen and Egypt and knew not to stop there. Now, how much you want to believe that there may have been some children of Yeshurel that did not do right? In the book of Jasser, we read that there are some people who did not do what Yahuwah told them to do when the plagues were in um, uh, Misraim. And when they had the days of darkness, the children of Yeshurel buried those that died because they were in sin so that the children, that the, um, the, the Egyptians wouldn't know that some of them were killed also. So we can think that we name the name of Yahuwah and we can do what we want to do and not follow every step that he's laid out for us. That is what the Torah is about. That is what the law is about. Those are instructions, guiding principles. Those are orders that he gives us so that we can live um, righteous Kodesh lives, set apart lives, those lives that are pleasing to him. And so when we do that, then we have a covering. They that dwell in the secret place of the Most High, you know, so we have a covering. Does not give us a license to do what we want to do and think we can, you know, it's almost like that person, um, a child that might hit someone and then run real quick and hide behind mom. No, no, mm -mm, that's not what the blood of the lamb is about. So last year, which would be um, 2021 Passover, I did it this way. I commemorated by praising him and being grateful for what he did through Yahusha and how he has given us the blood 
as a protection and a covering and um, and how we are to concentrate on the leaven in our lives so that we can be concentrated on getting free. Um, we fast from eating what we want to eat, those things that bring pleasure, um, have that those foods that have yeast, the donuts, the cakes, the sweet bread. No, we're not doing, we're refraining from that, we're fasting from that, we're putting that aside and we're concentrating on deliverance and uh, of our sins and our shortcomings. Why? So that we can be accounted worthy to live in, in, in eternity with him so that our names are not blotted out of the book of life. So I want to read an account in Revelations 9, verse 1. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven, Shamayim, unto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts from the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And he commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of Yahuwah in their foreheads. So they're telling the locusts what normally you would do is hurt the, the landscape. No, that's not what I want you to do. That's not your assignment this time. This time your assignment is to hurt those men who do not have the seal of Yahuwah in their foreheads. Isn't that, doesn't that sound like not having the blood? If the blood's not on the doorpost and on the lintel, then um, those houses are going to suffer torment and um, destruction. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months and their torment was as the torment of a scorpion. Then they when they strike at the man, so those locusts are going to hurt men for five months. Okay, this is not um, metaphoric. Okay, I don't believe it's metaphoric. I believe it's the truth. He's spelling it out. He's laying it out, giving us understanding. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. And the shapes of the locusts were like the unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were, as it were, crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men, and they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions, and they had breastplates as if it were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle, and they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew tongue is Abaddon. Ab Abaddon. And in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. One woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. So, during that time frame, which I believe that's part of the wrath of Yah, we will be covered and we'll be covered with the blood and we'll be covered because we are his elect and we are covered because we are Torah keepers and, and we reverence and remember Baruch, blessed are all those who revere Yahuwah and walk in his way, that we dwell in the secret place of the Most High. So the Passover lamb, having the blood of that lamb causes evil to pass over us but we've got to be in that right place we've got to follow the distinct specific instructions and orders that have been decreed from the throne of the most high in order for us to have that covering we don't do things the way we want to do it and making some celebrations we do not walk in religion we follow the word to the letter there is power in his word and his word has power and we are to do it, especially the way he said to do it. You know, when he told the children of Yeshua, the leaders, what they were supposed to do, um, it said that they bowed their head and they worshiped and they went back and they did what they were supposed to do. Um, so verse 27 in Exodus 20 says, and it shall come to pass when you Come to the land which Elohim will give you according as he has promised that ye shall keep this service and it shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you, what mean you by this service that you shall say? It is the sacrifice of Elohim's Passover. 
who passed over the houses of the children of Yeshurel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses. He smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses. And the people bowed the head and worshiped. He passed over the houses of the children of Yeshurel when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses. So as always, I always bring everything back to the great tribulation. We are going to have to be in a place that we are covered and we are protected. And whatever's coming to those who have um, refused to accept him as the most high, refuse to keep his word and walk in his ordinances and his statutes, they will suffer. Not only during tribulation, they will not um, be protected, but they will then, they who are still alive, will then have to suffer the, the wrath of the Most High. We want to receive him, his ordinances, everything that he has laid out. We want to um, be in that that number um, so that we are protected we are protected that when calamity and destruction comes to the houses of the Egyptians, those who are pagan worshipers, who have adopted the, the, the tradition, traditions of men and the pagan ways, them who do things the way they want to and feel that he will understand. He knows my heart. Oh yeah, he knows our heart. It says in Jeremiah 17, 5, we don't know our heart. We don't know the, the depths of the darkness in us. We don't know the grimy, smutty uh, mire, that that muck and mire that's in us. We don't know. Okay? So, we have to do the things that will keep us under the blood. When he says the blood on the doorpost and, um, and the instructions that he gave for them to do that, um, he said, let me read that in verse seven, and they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses. He tells us exactly what to do. I mean, he was so distinct and specific in the directions for them to have the protection. And that's what he's done with the, with the, with his instructions that we call the law. Um, he, he's done that. And so if we want that protection, if we want to be, have that covering, we've got to do the same. So enjoy your Passover, but notice he paid, he gave more time to eating of the unleavened bread. And he gave it an order. And I didn't really focus on that and see it until last year, Passover of 2021, because all before I was not eating the leaven, but I wasn't eating unleavened bread until last year. I mean, most years I might do it like the first day because that's what it said, that they would do the lamb and they would eat unleavened bread. But I didn't do it for the other six days. Um, so now I know, and I already told you um, in the other audio, in eating the unleavened bread, when I would eat it, I would use that time to focus on my ways and ask him to help me to be free of that. And I would denounce those ways and I would confess how I didn't want to be like that. I don't want to do those things to strengthen me. That is there, you know, it's all they were strength in eating that unleavened bread. So in other words, I'm becoming more like you. I'm eating that which is not of sin. I'm eating that which is, is life. I'm eating that which would bring a change about me. I'm eating that which is not necessarily pleasant to the taste, but will bring bring nutrients to my inner man. So anyways, enjoy your feast. Um, it's a feast unto Yahuwah. We commemorate his great work. I, I also read the account, not only in Exodus, but Psalms um, has an account of things like Psalms 106, Psalms 107 talks about their, their plight in the wilderness. 
Psalms 135, I think, has um, a portion of that is about it. But there's different places where it is mentioned. So I would go through those things and, and, and I would just read them to him and just like almost like sitting at his feet and just saying, wow, Father, you did this and you did this and just praising him and worshiping how he had he showed such a great deliverance for those people. And um, and he'll do the same. He plans to do the same for us who will honor him. Baruch are those who revere him. So let's reverence him in this time. And of course, do what he tells you to do. And not so much what I'm saying I got. If it's not what he tells you, because I am not your Elohim. I have not a heaven or a hell to order you to. So, but I am sharing and I hope that it does resonate. I hope it does enlighten you and say, wow, okay, I didn't see it that way. Oh, okay. And then some of y'all say, girl, you just not finding that out. <laughs> and I'll say, yes, I am just finding it out. But I'm so glad I found it out. You know, um, I'll say that I'm, I'm slow. I'm late sometimes. But, you know, even in school, I remember um, missing recess because I, to, to get the concept of the long division. But once I got it, I got it. And also dissecting sentences, which children today don't know what I'm even talking about, dissecting sentences. But I missed some recess, but when I got it, I got it. And I remember my sixth grade teacher mentioned that. It took me a while sometimes to get it, but I got it. And when I got it, it was mine. It was mine. And I knew how to do it. And I had a joy and a delight in doing long division and in dissecting sentences. So I might be late, you know. And remember that parable when um, um, the man went out and he found people that were idle and weren't working and he hired them. And um, and then the 12th hour he hired some, or maybe it was the 11th, the 11th hour he hired some more people. And so when it was time to get paid. Everybody got paid the same thing. And the people who got hired earlier, who, who worked in the heat of the day, they were angry because they got paid the same as the pre people who only worked for one hour. And he said, didn't I say that's what you was going to get when I hired you? Didn't I say that I'm hiring you for this and you agreed? So why are you upset that they're getting paid the same? I, I, I did the same thing with them. And so, hey, I might be late, but I'm getting it before it's too late. Right. <laughs> so anyways, praise y'all. Love y'all. And um, did you hear that? Praise y'all. Love y'all. <laughs> Praise Yahuwah. Let me make a distinction. Praise Yahuwah. I love y'all. I love Yahuwah. And I love y'all. <laughs> All right. Praise y'all. This is the first day of the week. And I'm excited how Yahuwah has kept us through another week and allowed us to see a new week. And may he be with us every day of this new week. And may he open up our eyes. Um, to see him and everything, see his Psalms um, 119 says, to see your wondrous, wondrous, miraculous works in your word. So we praise him. We win in Yahuwah. Be encouraged. Know that you are Baruch and that he is constantly um, sending blessings um, and he shines his face upon us. He brings order. He brings peace and shalom, um, shalom, I should say. He brings um, substance and everything that we need is there. So let's be in a place where we stay under the blood. We put the blood on the, strike it on the both doorposts and the post that's over the house. The upper doorposts of the house and the two side posts. In other words, just let's do everything that he says. Like his son said, his Ben said when he was here, I do always the things that please the father. And so me knowing that I don't always do the things that please him, I know I've got to eat some unleavened bread. Because I got to get this leaven out of me. Praise Yah. We win in Yahuwah. We win in Yahuwah. We win in Yahuwah. Praise be to Yahuwah. We win in Yahuwah. We win in Yahuwah. Praise Yah. We win. We win. Praise Yah.